Just talk about that. Allow me to introduce Mr. Dick Wien. Just talk about that. Greetings. I want to say it's a pleasure to be here because I frankly did not know about this show at all. Chris called me for last year, and Chris likes to book the, 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 the people a year in advance. I couldn't do that. I couldn't say, oh, sure, I'm free a year from now, because I, I was going to do a play, and it kept, they kept postponing it because hadn't, they hadn't finished writing it. So, so it went on and on and on. Finally, I had to say, Chris, I can't do it. So this year when he called, I could do it because they never did the play. So, <laughs> so, so I'm here, and, I, and I'm so pleased to find out just how large this thing is. Mm -hmm. Because I had never heard of it, I thought it was, oh, it's just this little show. But Niagara Falls, big deal. And uh, uh, my god. It's massive. I have, this is the first I've sat down. Mm -hmm. Since when I get eight o'clock? I mean, I well, know. even as I mentioned to you, I wanted to come by your table to introduce myself yeah. before we did this, and your your table's been busy. I, yeah, so I, don't I have just. An you know, it's so <laughs> nice to meet people mm -hmm. who appreciate the show, and it's the only horror picture I've done, mm -hmm. um, and who remember it, and who like it, and who have nice things to say about it. Because for a while, it was kind of the other show. It was the one that was well. There's. There's no real Jason in it anyway, so we don't consider that. And then a couple of Kane's films went kind of, kind of um, uh, sci-fi, and then they they pulled back on that, and all of a sudden now our show looks pretty good. So, <laughs> so I'm really pleased to meet people who actually like it and and people who like me. Well, it's a very so, interesting uh, twist, you know, to the whole, you know, Friday yeah, the 13th yeah, series. So, yeah. you know, I think that, you know, you, you certainly have to have different formulas come into play if there's, uh, yeah, you know, and that, yeah. that just kind of makes it much more interesting. So. And Danny Steinman, the director of the mm -hmm. show, um, well, we never discussed the fine points of acting, so um, uh, I just figured, okay, I'll do what I want to do and Danny will say, no, let's do it another way, or, or he'll come and correct. He never did. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, that, of course, he worked had a very small budget. Mm -hmm. He didn't have, the budgets got bigger as, as the whole thing got more successful, but Danny didn't have a lot of money to work with. So he did really well with the money he had. And, uh, um, and um, yeah, so it all, it all worked out. Um, the thing I'm finding too this year in signing masks and signing, because people collect this stuff and they, they want everybody's autograph is, uh, reminds me so much of Richard Brooker who I was very, very close to. And some people don't have his autograph. And uh, Brooker was part three. And the first guy to wear the, actually wear the mask. In fact, last year we did a documentary on Brooker which opened in October, I guess. and. Uh, um, Brooker was a good bud, and I was so sorry to see him go, but, um, and it kind of brings it all back now. So if you have anything you want to kind of throw my way, go ahead and do it. We have I'm, a I'm, microphone I'm not much here, of a talker, so, so. This, is like, this is like big talk for me. I'm not. <laughs> but we have a microphone here, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to come up and, and ask. Um, I mean, I have a question for you, because yeah. uh, obviously on Friday the 13th, part five, there, there was that twist that's only revealed at the end. Yeah. Um, and I, I've read that, you know, the, the last few pages of the script were yes. kept private. Yes. Uh, throughout the fil filming, were other people aware uh, of any sort of twist in it? Because I know as well that, I mean, you played Roy the paramedic, mm. um, but then after that, um, which I know that you were a bit disappointed with at points because you figured that you could have done some of the, the other stunts. Um, a lot of the stunts were done by uh, by stuntmen. Like by I know Tom. even the Tom. the situation where they're they're falling out of the uh, the loft. Yeah. That's actually two different stuntmen that did that. Oh, scene. it is. Yeah, it's two I, different I stuntmen. That. Like I thought, one I thought it was where they're Tom. about to where yeah. he's hanging on, and then another one where they fall. Yeah. So given that there were uh, other stuntmen kind yeah. of in the Jason Voorhees uh, uh, outfit, yeah. was anyone else on the set aware uh, that you were in fact? Uh, em emulating when uh, you Jason shoot Voorhees. when you shoot things out of sequence and you're only and you look at the script sometimes you don't read the whole thing mm -hmm. you don't realize w how it ends and with the five pages at the end missing mm -hmm. you really don't know what's going on mm -hmm. so um, 
people would watch me do stuff and they, they would not really know why I was doing it, but, mm -hmm. it, but, it was, but it was there, it was okay. But then nobody knows why they were doing their stuff either, you know, mm -hmm. so, so it, it's kind of a, the whole thing was a bit of a mystery, but, but uh, so I couldn't get really close to anybody mm -hmm. because they would say, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I couldn't really tell them. So mm -hmm. uh, as I say, I just, just did my stuff and they, they took, in fact, I had to actually, when they took the five pages uh, off the script for everybody's script, I had actually signed a document saying I would not tell anybody the ending of the film mm -hmm. after it was released even, mm -hmm. so, which was weird. I've never had to do that. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing, too, on my table, I have a, uh, a cast of me, which we made uh, before we started shooting, um, a plaster cast, and then they, they, they made a rubber thing, and then somebody put dressed it with hair and eyebrows. Mm -hmm. We were going to use that because the original script had me having my head cut off and rolling down a hill. And that's, that's the way it was going to be. Mm -hmm. So that's why we made this thing. So, and I'm very fortunate to have it. Some, some kids had it in Chicago and apparently wanted a lot of money for it. No. And I did a favor for somebody else and he bought it and then he gave it to me. Oh, that's sweet. So it, that's, that's the only reason I have it. Yeah. But anyway, somebody decided, probably rightfully so, toward the, when they started shooting that this thing about the head rolling down the hill, this has already been done mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. So and then they changed it to the barn mm -hmm. and falling on the spikes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they never used that. So I'm, I'm just very pleased to have it. But that's why it's there, because it was supposed to be part of the show. Um, and um, you asked me something, I forget what it was. Um, just if, if anyone else in the cast was aware oh, uh, no. of this no. twist. Well, or, Tom, of course. Yeah. But because uh, even in the beginning, it, it was called. Uh, uh, yeah. Another rever not reverend. Uh, yeah, um, I have it written down. Yeah. Um, Shavir Ross said, said that in the documentary. Um, yeah. Extension or, or or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what was Endeavor that? or something like that. Yeah. 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 Was, uh, yeah. 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 So, so I'm just very so pleased. Even, yeah, because I was going to say, even when uh, they started filming, a lot of the actors weren't even aware that this was a Friday the 13th film that they were filming. They only kind of realized it later on when... when well, see, I saw, knew it. Yeah. I knew it. Uh, so I guess they did by the time we were going to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and my agent said when, when they booked it, they said, all the, all the children will love you. I had no idea what they were <laughs> talking about because I had not seen a Jason film. Mm -hmm. So I had to go figure out, well, who is this Jason dude anyway? Because I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I had to, to watch, uh, I watched Ari's film, part one. I thought, well, okay, this is not, not a bad film at all. This is good. Then I watched Richards, and I thought, holy hell. How, <laughs> how are we going to do this? How are you going to fit into uh, those shoes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Richard was a good bud. Yeah. And uh, so I just had to try to figure, and that's the actor's problem. What, what, what is going to make me so upset that I want to be, because Jason was in the news, counties away. Mm -hmm. So I just said, okay, I'm going to be him now. And so I had to really be kind of messed up to, to and seeing my son, you know, dead, uh, did that. So that was my, you know, my Reason. problem. And uh, so we did that. And, uh, um, and I guess it worked. Uh, um, and then, of course, the, the final reveal was kind of fun because I'm lying there with spikes and it's raining. And, and then you, well, the you find out at the hospital. The theatrical rain. It was a hose, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but it was, it was fun. And then they're like, oh, my God, it was Roy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah so, that, so that, that, that's fun. That's fun. He was a paramedic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was, yeah, yeah, certainly a very interesting twist to it. But, I remember uh, seeing it when I was a teenager, but you know. What's remarkable when I think about it now when I'm meeting people who really remember me and remember the film and have nice things to say about it, it somehow it strikes you that this was 30 years ago. Yes. 1986. 19, was it wasn't it March 1985. 80, I, think, I thought it came out in 86. Mm -hmm, maybe. I don't know. Um, Over 30 years ago. And I was told that uh, I was going to do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I was going to be. Uh, Roy and Jason. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line, Danny Steinman decided that he wanted a separate stuntman. 
And I, I watch it, and I thought, there's nothing really dangerous here. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, the, the falling out of the, but there's not really anything I couldn't have done. Mm -hmm. And I was pissed. Mm -hmm. I was really pissed. I had my issues with the with the, the stunt coordinator. I said, I don't understand. I'm being paid for this, and I'm not doing it. And, and I don't know why I'm not doing it. I was really, really upset by it. And uh, uh, and my agent just told me, Dick, shut up. <laughs> so so anyway, um, but it was Danny who decided that. And uh, uh, so um, that kind of got me a little bit. But and the other thing was that I know this is a very small little thing, but when you have like when Ted White doubled John Wayne. Ted White was uh, uh, part four. It was Jason in part four. But he has a, he's a stuntman. I'm an actor. He's a stuntman. So when I auditioned, for the, I auditioned as an actor, not a stuntman. Um, but, but, but Ted doubled John Wayne for many years. Mm -hmm. But Ted is actually taller than John Wayne. Mm -hmm. Now, they always gave John Wayne boots with heels that are like this, okay, <laughs> to make him even taller than he is. With Ted White, they had to take those heels and make him smaller because he was taller than John Wayne. <laughs> so when it comes to Tom Morgan and I, and Tom, Tom and I are friends, so this is not a big thing, but they chose Tom who is totally different from me. Mm -hmm. We don't have the same shoulders. We don't have the same arms. We don't have, don't have the same chest. We're not built the same. Mm -hmm. I would never have chosen Tom to be my double. Mm -hmm. But somehow they did that and you just don't know how it, I had never had a double before, so I, I uh, you know, it was just a surprise to me. But, mm -hmm. but I think it all worked out in in most people's minds. And, and uh, but I'm just so pleased now that it's looked looked upon as a better, a better example of the of the series than it was when it first came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I'm really talking, aren't I? I, I don't really <laughs> talk, but because I'm here and I'm answering a lot of questions out there, yeah. I guess I'm. You know. Well, again, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to come up to the microphone. Yeah, come come up to the microphone if you don't mind, please. I can just yeah. uh, project. Yeah. Project. <laughs> tenth, tenth row, project to the tenth, to the balcony. <laughs> uh, I was, but it's not in the film. Absolutely. Thank well, thank you. you. Your beautiful blue eyes. Um, um, I never thought about Tom's eyes. I, I never. Well, when you look at what, that scene where you see uh, your son has been slaughtered, yeah. I mean, yeah. your eyes are extremely piercing. Well, in that. okay. Well, I had to do something there to, yeah. to go a little nuts. Mm -hmm. Or as I say in the docu, no, a lot nuts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I just figured, okay, that's what's going to do it. And. Uh, but I don't know what, uh, frankly, behind the mask, I don't know what, I don't remember. I've not seen the film in a while, so. Mm -hmm. But it never struck me that Tom's, because all of Tom is different <laughs> than I am. So it never struck me about the eyes. But that's an interesting point. Next time I'll, mm -hmm. I, I see it, which won't be for a while, but I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll uh, oh, I come from the Bell of My favorite horror film, by the way, House of Wax, 1953. Mm -hmm. Vincent Price mm -hmm. in 3D, yeah. <laughs> directed by Andre de Toth, who had one eye. A 3D film directed by a director with one eye. Wow. But it works. And when I was a kid and I saw that, I swore all night that he was underneath my bed. <laughs> you know, but that's really my, even to this day, it's, it's one of my favorite films. Mm -hmm. But I grew up, don't forget, I grew up in the Lugosi Karloff era. Mm -hmm. And are watching watching old Lugosi Karloff films, so, um, and I was uh, saying to somebody who was it, uh, a thing called House of Frankenstein. Um, Bell Lugosi is doubled by five different people in that film. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's really funny. Mm -hmm. um, but um, anyway, so where was I? Why am I why am I talking about that? I don't know. About the mask, you wanted to uh, know. Oh, the how eyes. And you yeah, were actually yeah, in the mask, yeah. and because the eyes would be. Uh, Somebody asked me, well, when you decided to be Jason, when Rory decides to be, where'd you get the mask? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have no, I have no idea. Never thought about that. Yeah. You, die, you know, don't even think about it. 
<laughs> so I, I don't I don't know what happened. I sometimes wonder too if one of the tip offs uh, is is the mask itself because it has blue on it as opposed yeah. to the red. So yeah. you're kind of tipped off when you're you're watching the film that well you know that the mask is not the same as, as some of the other Jasons. Yeah, Brooker's so, was I mean, red, I think, yeah. yeah. And Richard was the first one to wear it. Yeah, because um, I think yours is the only one that has the blue the on blue, it. The yeah, blue, yeah, yeah. So. And I forget what Kane had uh, um, and yeah. what CJ had, I yeah. don't know. So sometimes that might have been, I mean, I guess if you're really paying attention after you've watched it and go back and watch it again, like, oh, maybe that was yeah. a bit of a, um, uh, an Easter egg or, mm. or whatever. Have you seen all of them? In, I, I actually recently watched yours again uh, because I knew I was doing this, oh, but I'm, I have seen them all. I'm I have nice seen them all, but over years. Good, good um, for it's you. been a long I time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually I, watched it twice. I think I saw recently. CJ's. I, did I see mm -hmm. Ted's? I don't know. Yeah, no, but of course Ted and I get along, and I, but, but I really haven't seen this film. I was going to say, like as a teenager, that was one of our favorite things: is to you know go to my friend's basement, and go to the the video store, and get like the horror movies, oh, and, yeah, and yeah. then go and, yeah. and watch them yeah. and get yeah. scared. Yeah. And it was, well, I come you know, from the I come from the John Zacherly school. Uh -huh. Friday night, John Zacherly Shock <laughs> Theater, I think it was, and uh, it was Zacherly. Zacherly used to do these shows I, too. He, yeah. he would do these. I, I met him in uh, Philadelphia, I think. Doing the show, but uh, um, yeah, when I grew up, there was no videotape, and no. there was nothing to rent. Well, this yeah. was in, like mid '80s, so yeah. you know. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm old. <laughs> I'm 73, for God's sake. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Can I help you with anything that you want to know? Yeah. Yes, sir. He's going to use the microphone. Yeah, why not? It's Bar here. Jones. It's here. We're going to use it. Um, well, let me introduce. This is Mr. Kelly Michael Stewart from Blood in the Stowe. He's our uh, festival director extraordinaire. Yeah. I, I didn't come up with the plug. I can't have a question. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, Mel. Um, I was kind of curious, like, because obviously the film was a little, there was, the fans were very divided when it came out um, because it was just obviously a different angle on it. Yeah. At what point did you, it, you know, when it, uh, over time, because it has developed a real strong cult following that particular one yeah. of it. And so obviously, like, you know, doing conventions now and so forth. At what point did you notice over the last 30 years that the, that the film had, had grown its own kind of cult audience? Because we've seen that with other kinds of films, like in other franchises and stuff like that, where ones that maybe weren't appreciated at the time, like Halloween 3 yeah. and films like that, later on became uh, much, more, uh, much more revered. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if I can pinpoint. There's a, on YouTube, there's a very nice docu about the making of, and it's also included on the DVD. And, and the guy is just saying, and Savini's in it, the guy who's, who's saying, uh, talking about it, is talking about how the film should be regarded in a, in a better form than it is. And I started wondering, well, why isn't it? Is it? I don't know. And it, then I come to a show like this, where I have a whole line of people that remember it and like it. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't seen that since 2008. And it may be the different tact that some of Kane's things did, going into sci-fi and being a little crazy. And then, then they pulled back on that now. And it may be after that that they thought, well, you know, part, part, part five wasn't that bad. It was different, but it wasn't crazy, and uh, it was plausible, and maybe then. So a date, a time, I, I don't know. What's just, again, what surprises me is how many people are here this weekend remembering this film, and it just surprised. I didn't even print a whole bunch of pictures because I thought, because people usually bring me stuff to sign. Mm -hmm. They don't use. I'm, I'm almost out of out of my favorite pictures now, and it's only Saturday. Uh, and people really have wonderful things to say about it. And it's surprising me because I never expected it. I expected people who are collectors saying, oh, I, I need you. Okay, fine. But not saying the great things about the film they're saying. Mm -hmm. But they are. They're saying great stuff. And I'm, like, really surprised and, of course, delighted. Um, um, which means in my, I met my old agent here, and he said, boy, we're going we're gonna to have you out more. Because he mm -hmm. thought I quit. Mm -hmm. And I didn't tell him I quit, but he thought I did. And uh, so, so, yeah, it's very exciting to me to meet these people just because they like the doggone film. Mm -hmm. 
And it's not just me that they want for the collection of having all the guys, you know. But they're actually saying great things about the film, and that's such a pleasure. That's Absolutely. such a pleasure. I mean, better that than, boy, boy your film sucked, but I, I want your <laughs> autograph. Yeah, they're not saying that. They're not saying that. They're saying it's much better thought of now than before. Mm -hmm. But when that happened, I'm, I don't really know. I don't really know. Sir? <laughs> in Kinko's? Kinko's to get more photos back. I don't have the next. Well, I, 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 could, yeah, I could have copies. Yeah. Yeah. So the three favorite pictures that I have out there. No, the, the one is, is, there is one that I, but, but th there are three favorite pictures out there that I have that I got off of Facebook. Wow. The people actually <laughs> manufactured half me, half mask, and some crazy stuff mm -hmm. that people sent me on Facebook. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. So I copied those, mm -hmm. put, them on a DVD, put, put them on a CD, took it to my photo, oh, and I, in Photoshop, I put my name on it, and I framed it, and I did st stuff, because I'm good with Photoshop. And I, I took them to the lab, and I printed them, and doggone, they're going. <laughs> uh, I, I, so that was like real, a real pleasure. <laughs> it's gonna need you for the question. Sir. I was just curious how, uh, how long it took to do the actual movie itself from beginning to end, and also how you like, obtained the script and, and got the role. Okay, um, I auditioned as an actor. Now, Brooker and everybody else, and Ted are well-known, well, not Richard at the time, no, but they're stuntmen. So they have a reputation of stuntmen. Sometimes the stunt coordinator would pick them, I believe, in concert with the, with the producer. I'm sorry. I had to audition as an actor, so I auditioned with a bunch of other people for the director and the casting director. And, uh, and it was the casting director who thought of me called my agent and said, I want to see Dick Weon. Okay, so uh, then there was a call back. That's when they want to see you again with, with fewer people. Then there was a second call back, as I remember. Uh, and this is where he had me imagine on the table seeing my dead son. So I did that. This is Danny Steinman. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't film it or anything, which they do now, but they didn't. And. Uh, so he chose me, but he chose me as, as Roy. He chose me as the actor, because I was the only actor, you know. But then, in the end, my agent said I was, do, I was going to do all of it. So I thought, great. How long? I think I worked for two weeks, and then I had off. Um, I mean, I'm still being paid, but I, I'm off. Then I, for maybe two months, and then came back for the for the final the reveal, and some of the other little things that that we that were left undone. So, but this was 30 years ago, and frankly, I don't really remember just how long it was. <laughs> but uh, 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 but I got nice residuals from it for a long. I'm still getting residuals from it. Well, you've uh, been appearing here, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah but but I'm, I'm I'm getting residuals from Paramount. Mm -hmm. Because um, every time they play it, they got to pay you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, yeah, it's worldwide. But uh, I don't really know how long. But the, the difference was that I uh, had to audition as an actor. So I had lines and I had, you know, script and all that stuff. Um, and then, uh, uh, as I say, I was really pissed when I found out that <laughs> I wasn't going to be doing all of it. Yeah. But uh, um, did, that, did I hit everything I or think, was there I something else? It was a three part question, wasn't it? There's some, there was yeah. some part I don't think I hit. Tell me. Okay, all right. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? So you were mentioning to me as we were yeah. coming in the door, yeah. just to, I guess, go off of Friday the 13th yeah. uh, for a moment. Yeah. You had mentioned a funny story from uh, when you were on Murder, She Wrote. Oh, Murder, She Wrote, yes. yeah. Well, I played a news, I played a talking head news reporter. Now, let me think. A talking head news reporter. And I had the script a week ahead of time. So I could actually memorize my lines. Because I'm just talking straight into camera. Mm -hmm. And so we come time to shoot it. And um, so I'm sitting there, and they're, they're, they're lighting it, and they're, they're ready for me. So we get action. So I do it. I do it two, two times. Then a gal said, oh, you missed this, this one line here. Uh, oh, I did? Or I said the word wrong or something, so we did it the third time. That's the script supervisor. That's her, that's her job. And uh, 
So it was kind of a long speech. It appears now as they start with me, but then it's just sound over, over Gene Simmons and, and Angela Lansbury talking. And so, so I'm done. So a gal comes up to me and she said, there's someone who would like to meet you. Oh, okay. So I walk to the corner of, of, the, of, the, of the stage, the studio, and there's like 10 people there, and they're all like, and out comes Gene Simmons. <laughs> Gene Simmons, who played Ophelia to Laurence Olivier's Hamlet. Gene Simmons, who was one of the, an actress that I respected so much. And she says to me, you were wonderful in that. I've seen a lot of people do stuff like that, but you were just, you just had it. You were just wonderful. And I'm like in shock that Gene Simmons is telling me mm -hmm. that when I didn't really have that much to do, I just had this monologue into the, into the, the lens, but she was some, somehow watching it on the monitor. And it just blew me away. Mm -hmm. And Gene Simmons, I had passed uh, the trailers, and she has a tough time with lines. Mm -hmm. And she has somebody in there helping her, you know, with her lines. And mm -hmm. it's what you spend all day doing is memorizing your lines. Mm -hmm. And because um, a lot of times they make changes in the morning for what you're going to shoot in the afternoon. And you're like, God. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the way it is. Yeah. And, and I never met Angela Lansbury, but, but uh, uh, yeah, that was just a, a shocker to me because I, I, I respected her so much. Someone you admire, compliment. Yes. Was, uh, and she's, of course, she's gone now. But, but uh, uh, yeah, so that was, like, that was like one of the nicest things that happened to me mm -hmm. in, 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 in television. But I'll tell you another little Hollywood story. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about at all. That's okay. I'm in, a, I'm in, a, Chinese, I'm in a Chinese restaurant with a date, okay? <clears throat> and we're sitting here, and there's table, 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 table against the windows, table, table. And at the very end, there's a, a glass window here and a glass window here. And it's gorgeous. It's just this gorgeous thing. And there's a guy in a wheelchair, okay? And there's a woman with him, and there's two children. Fine. I watch the woman do this. to the guy in the wheelchair. And I thought, you know, as an actor, you're always watching stuff. You're always watching behavior. I thought, that was really interesting. So I go back to my, and I keep watching. And it happens again, and it happens again. And I'm just amazed. And it's like it's normal for them, OK? So they finished before we did. So the wheelchair is turned around. The wheelchair comes down the thing. I looked at him. He looked at me. We just kind of. Mm -hmm. grinned and, and they paid and they left and it took me two minutes to realize that was Stephen Hawking. Oh my goodness. Yes. That, wow. was, be that was before he was like really. Yeah. That's before he even needed an interpreter. Yeah. He was still, he was still erect yeah. and he could still talk. Uh -huh. And that our eyes met and smiled at each other. Wow. Stephen Hawking. Wow. I'm like one of the most amazed. brilliant minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an amazing yeah. story. And, I, and it's a shame he had to eat that way. I mean, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that was, that was so, that was so neat. Um, I have other little stories, but they're not that interesting. But that was an interesting, interesting one to me because I respected him so much. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, how do you, how do you not? But um, anyway. And unexpected that you would. You know, I will answer anything you want. And if yes. we're done, we're done. Yes, sir. Yep. Hi, dozo. <laughs> That's Japanese. Um, I just got a simple question. Yeah. What's your favorite scene in the movie? My death scene. Mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> well, because to me, it's the big reveal. It's the big reveal. It's yeah. the big reveal. I'm lying there with spikes, and it's raining, and it didn't take that well. It took a half. It took 45 minutes, an hour to shoot. I was frozen when we went, went, uh, left, yeah. but but it was uh, yeah, yeah. They shot a couple different angles. Um, the mask was close by, um, and it was just uh, it was the most important one to me. So it's got to be, even though I I didn't do anything, <laughs> I just laid there. Yeah. But but uh, um, uh, well, no, I did different positions too. We did we different di different shots, but. And that, that ended up being my, my, my but favorite. But up until that point, you have no idea that it's not yeah. Jason. The only reason Brady's I'm here is because of that scene. Yeah. Sorry? Right? I said the only reason I'm here is because of that scene. <laughs>
<laughs> well, and then after the the explanation in the hospital of you know it actually had been having been your son, yeah, um, that uh, you had put in the or you had given up after the the death of your wife uh, in childbirth, I think, and that's why he ends up in the group home. Is, uh, and then, so no one is able to kind of make that connection between you and the son, because they even say in the film that mm. no one knew he had any family or, or, you know, that there was any connection even to, to Roy. Mm. So, mm. Um, you know, and then kind of at that point, everything starts to come together and, okay. and you realize. Yeah, then the guy yeah. pulls a picture. Out yeah, of his wallet, and then the next it's, one it's, is, my, is... It's my headshot. Yeah, here's your yeah. son. Yeah. And, uh, so. I don't even where they got that because that was not my headshot. So I don't yeah. know. How, I don't know how they got that. But maybe off of uh, off the internet. Could <laughs> could could be. Didn't oh, exist but, then. But. Which we're talking 19, what internet? We're talking 1985, 86. What are you talking about? Yeah. Online. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, the days before the computers. Oh. But, uh, yeah. So that was kind of the interesting reveal at the hospital when they do explain. You know how it all came came to be, and how you um, you know wanted to seek revenge, or mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. um, if it was uh, you know guilt that yeah. you were you know kind of taking this revenge on. on yeah, I used I used Jason as, as an excuse. I didn't necessarily want it to be me. Mm -hmm. And this guy was killing people counties away. He was in mm -hmm. the news, so I feel I'd just be him. Yeah, I'd just be him. Yeah, where'd you get the mask? <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah. I don't know. So. So, do we have any other questions, or? Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching the Convention Junkies coverage of the 2018 Niagara Falls Comic Con. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see more. And let us know below what you think of this video. If you would like to help us with future projects, please visit our Patreon page.